Song Revolution with John Chisholm on the NRT Podcast Network. Hey everybody, John here again with Song Revolution. Thanks for taking a little bit of time to hang out with me here. You know, uh, this company, Nashville Christian Songwriters, exists to empower you. And we do that in a lot of different ways. We have a lot of great free material. We've got some premium programs, including our NCS Pro Song Mastery. We're working now to fill our January groups. There's just a couple of spots left, so I hope that you'll consider that. More information later in the show. You know, this is the time of year when people are beginning to think about their New Year's goals, right? Setting these phenomenal, amazing goals for the new year. I'm going to get a whole new body. I'm going to get a whole new bank account. I'm going to get a whole new life. All the stuff, right, that we fantasize about. And then those goals really kind of last about four days. And that's about it. Gym memberships, you know, just shoot through the roof during this December and then early January. And then they're either canceled or regretted the entire next year. Well, I want to help you avoid that. I want to talk about the difference between setting goals and living into our purpose through stewardship in a few moments on the show today. But before I do that, I want to mention a couple of great folks that you need to know about. First people are the Gnome Studios guys. We love them, Steve, and all the guys that are part of this group. They allowed us to be here today, so we want to do a big shout out to Gnome Studios in the heart of Nashville, almost downtown. You can see all the big stuff from here, and it's a great cozy little studio tucked in to uh, the downtown area of Nashville. So check it out. If you come to Nashville and need a studio, check out Gnome Studios. And then some other folks that I really love, I went after them to be a sponsor on our podcast, are the great folks over at Music City Acoustics. You can find them at musiccityacoustics.com. When I went to trick out my own office studio, my podcast studio, I checked into them and right there on their website is the coolest thing. You can just give them the dimensions of your room and then they will send back in a day or so a CAD drawing of what you need to reinforce the sound in your room. Whether you have a home studio or or church, an office, or I like to say Winnebago, a noisy Winnebago that you want to get some good sound treatment for, check out musiccityacoustics.com and tell them I sent you, mention the Chiz Pod, and they will give you a great deal on your first order. So thanks, you guys. Hey, so what was really on my mind to talk about today is, is, is creating a successful songwriting strategy for 2023. Here we are. This is being released on December 30th, so we're just on the cusp of New Year's. And I, I don't know about you, I always feel energized. I don't know what it is uh, about January. It's my birth month. I don't know what if that has anything to do with it, but I feel like the slate has been kind of wiped clean. Maybe it's cultural programming. I don't know, but I always feel kind of fresh and new and like everything's been reset. Like, you know, in the Bible, when the Jubilee, Jubilee year happened, you know, all the deaths were forgiven the land returned to its owners, right? It, it was just a great, great time in Israel. And maybe it's a little bit of that for me. I feel like things are just kind of fresh. We can start over. We can do something new and better than we did last year. So I'm always kind of excited when January rolls around. But I've learned enough about myself to know that I'm I'm really terrible at setting goals. Uh, let me rephrase that. I'm terrible at keeping my goals. And I've really learned that, for me, goals really can become discouraging because you start kind of missing the workouts in the morning. You start getting back on sugar or diet drinks or whatever it is that you struggle with and wish was out of your life. And once those things start creeping back in, then it's so easy to get discouraged and then you just give up on them. And that's the majority of what happens. And there are psychological reasons for that, actually. Our bodies have become so accustomed to the sugar, to the carbs, to whatever it is that we're putting in it, that when we begin to deny it, especially when we just go cold turkey on this stuff, uh, your body rebels, your mind rebels. The actual physiology rebels against those kinds of changes. And so what I've 
What I found works better for me is to set New Year's intentions. And to, th- there's a nuance there because the intention means that it is a long game. It's a long range goal that I can then back up from kind of retrofitting what I need to do each day to live into that intention. And so if there's, or if there's a day or even a series of days that I'm unable to get to working on that, it doesn't mean that I've failed. I don't have to deal with that sense of shame or guilt or letdown or depression that I didn't finish out my goal the way that I said I was going to. So it, it it's, it's kind of nuanced, but it's a way that I can live into practicing stewardship around the intentions that I set, around the things that I feel I really want to accomplish, whether it's a physical goal, a spiritual goal, something in my own discipline or my relationships or my finances or my business. If I, if I can have a vision, you know, Habakkuk said, without a vision, the people go crazy, you know, and that's really, I know that's the truth for me. If I'm not aiming at something that's driving me, that I'm passionate about, that even if I falter or fail or take a wrong turn, I can still get back on the path toward fulfilling that thing that I feel God's put in my heart. Let's talk about you for just a moment. I believe that God's put a lot in your heart. I don't think you'd be watching this podcast, listening to me right now, if you didn't feel that God had put something really deep, purposeful, meaningful, passionate in you to write songs that not only glorify God, but that really allow you to feel that you're stewarding your gifts very well. That's an, that's what I hear so much uh, from songwriters is they say, I just want to use my gifts to glorify God. Well, I want to give you the steps to get there. And that's what NCS is all about. And so if I could encourage you to do something, it would be to get out a piece of paper right now. Don't wait. And let's talk for a few minutes about creating your successful songwriting strategy for 2023. And just as I was sharing a moment ago, you can have these lofty goals and then fail to reach them and be all down on yourself, or you can just come up with some strategy, set some intentions, some clear intentions about what you need to do to live into the best songwriting that you possibly can in this new year. I mean, here's the choice. You can be sitting here next year at this same time and not be any better, not be any better of a songwriter, not have reached any more people, still feel that frustration, still feel that sense of of, um, unfulfillment, I guess is a way to put it, but just feeling kind of down on yourself because you haven't accomplished more uh, next year than you have this year. Well, let's just break that cycle. Let's set some intentions and really take a Take an inventory of where we are and where we want to be. So let's talk a little bit right now about your core songwriting mission. For me, if you don't know your mission, it's like getting in the car and not knowing where you're going. You can drive all over the city, even the country, but if you don't have a destination in mind, you're not ever going to know when you get there. And so when I say core songwriting mission, I really mean the underlying why of what you're doing. Okay, for me, I came to Christ out of a very broken childhood, a lot of drugs, sex, and rock and roll, and I didn't know who I was as a person. And so when I came to Christ, he really restored me, or maybe created me all brand new, I guess, but it was my journey then really began uh, to be about healing and worship. And so my 40 years of writing at this point have really been more or less about healing and worship. And when I think about the themes that are most important to me, it's that I share that healing with people. I share the hope that you can be whole on the inside as well as worship. Worship has been right alongside that to see people come into a sense of the presence of God and find their wholeness there in Him. That that just makes me very, very happy. And so on your piece of paper, Write down what do you what do you even think that your core songwriting mission is? And I'm not talking about my mission is to get on the radio or my mission is to get in front of a million people in churches. I don't even mean that. I mean that underlying why. What is that motivation within you? When you're left to your own thoughts and you get into that that quiet, peaceful place in your spirit, 
what is it that you feel most in touch with? What if, if you had one minute to stand up in front of the world, what would you say? Right? So think about your why. And the second thing I would encourage you to do is to think about the who, because no one is going to be able to write for the masses. That's just a joke. You, you can't write for everybody. God has, has, has outfitted you to write for a specific group of people. Very, very few writers write for all genres. There might be a little bit of crossover here and there, but you think about the greatest artist of our time, Christian and mainstream, and they all have a particular audience. We were listening to Doobie Brothers this week, and uh, you know, think about the Doobie Brothers audience, and maybe Lauren Daigle's audience, or think about Sting, the people that have very um, wonderful reach around the world, but they are a thing. They are a genre. They have an audience. And God's called you. I, I believe that everyone listening to this has an audience, even if it's just you. God is certainly the audience of one, but you know, it, your family might be your audience, your church, your small group, or maybe God wants to promote you to some larger platforms. I'm not sure. That's not in, in my ability to know at this, at this moment. But you, you know the desires God's put in your heart. So you've got the why, what's motivating you, and then the who, who are those groups. Now think about 1 Corinthians 1.3. Paul says, we give you the comfort that God's given us. And I've seen so many times, like my heart is for people that are broken and need healing and, and need to come into a sense of worship. You know, there are lots of people who've been through divorce, who've been through abuse, who've been through loss, uh, who've been through cancer, who've been through all kinds of things. And once they come into a sense of wholeness in themselves, often they really long to bring that to other people. And that's like Paul said, giving the comfort that God's given us. So what is that in your life? What is your real testimony? Uh, you've got the, the why and the who, but who do you take your why to? How does that happen for you? So think on your piece of paper, best you can, write down even just a few sentences, your why and your who. Who is the audience stylistically? Who is the audience as far as your message goes? And you're going to be a lot further along. And then the third thing is your how. Everybody needs to know their why, their who, and their how. How do you plan? How, what kind of strategy can you begin to imagine that would help you to reach uh, these intentions that God's putting on your heart for 2023. You know, the music business really is not mysterious. It exists through discovering your mission, developing your skills, producing some kind of of product with your songs, and then engaging with an audience. It's really as simple as those four things. We can get a, a lot more granular with all that, but it really exists in those four things. Mission, building your skills, production, and engagement. So that becomes the how. And that's where we come in at Nashville Christian Songwriters. Everything that we offer is really to help you engage with those intentions. And one of the things I wanted to share with you today before we, we bring this thing to a close is our NCS Pro Song Mastery Program. It's helped people become Grammy nominees, make recordings, release singles, uh, in incredibly level up their local worship song leading. And I, I want that for you. So I want to encourage you to make investigating NCS Pro Song Mastery part of your 2023 songwriting success strategy. Look in the description and the show notes, set up a phone call with us, and we just want to walk alongside with you to help you invest in yourself and in the audience that's waiting to hear about your life, that's waiting to know your why, and to hear all the wonderful messages that God wants to bring through your life. All right, thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time on Song Revolution. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show today. I hope that you'll jump over to NashvilleChristianSongwriters.com and check out all the resources there to encourage you in your own songwriting. And if you like what we're doing, why not share this episode out on your socials? You can find the link in the show notes. We'll see you next time.